Welcome back to HMHT. So this is sort of a video that I've been longing to do for quite some time now, but Apple actually wouldn't let me do it. When macOS Pixel 11.2 release candidate came out, I obviously updated, highlighted what's new or what's changed right there. But then I was like, you know, I'll use this software for like three or four days and then highlight what has changed or what are some bugs that are existing with the update. But you know, every time I tried Apple, whoop, after one working day after the release of RC1, they released another release candidate. I'm like, what? I just updated yesterday. And then after two working days, again, they released another release candidate, which is RC3 and which is actually the OS that's running on my MacBook Pro here. But anyways, now that I'm able to do the video, hopefully we don't see another RC version. And now let's get into the video. Sponsored by Clean My Mac X. So first things first, the first thing that we need to keep in mind is that this thing of, you know, RC2, RC3, RC whatever or infinity is unprecedented. It's something that's not common for Apple to release so many release candidates, but what the term release candidate in itself means, according to the Apple developer website, RC basically indicates that the version in question is actually near final. So mainly the main differences that we have between a release candidate and the beta is that well, a release candidate is sort of intended to be the final build. For example, what happened on uh, actually iOS 14.4, when they released it, they actually released one release candidate and the same goes for watchOS 7.3. One release candidate, the release candidate went for review and then for those particular devices, well, the release candidate versions were actually fine and on iOS 14.4, it ended up fixing quite a number of issues. But for macOS, it sort of seems to be different. As you can see, we are reaching RC number three. And also another fundamental difference that is there between a release candidate and the beta is that usually if an OS, for example, in this case, macOS Pixel 11.2 is going to include new features or changes, major new features and changes, it usually comes within the beta stages. So a beta introduces new features and changes, and then a release candidate usually doesn't do that. A release candidate is basically a final product of that beta. So a release candidate comes out, goes for review, and basically with a release candidate, what developers do, they are checking for stability and security with the OS, if it's stable and secure enough for us to be able to release all the changes we've implemented in the beta stages to the public on a wide scale. So that's what's the main difference with this beta release candidate. I know sometimes it can get sort of confusing and you know, Apple is no longer using the term GM or golden master that we used to refer to last year. So all that changed and now we have release candidate. And as you can see, it's possible to have stages of release candidates. Like for example, in this case, when it comes to 11.2, the released macOS Pixel 11.2 RC, which was intended to be like the final product. So when it was in review, I guess they found out that there's some Bluetooth issues, especially affecting Apple Silicon M1 Max. And in a bid to sort of rectify that, they released RC number two. RC number two comes out and then after some time, they sort of realized that there could be some security issues and stability issues and some super user do issues with the update. So they released RC number three. Now it's sort of strange because on macOS Pixel, sudo or super user do isn't actually editable. It's sort of different from Windows or other operating systems that we have there. Super user do edit in Linux is just like a symbolic link. And what this basically is indicating is that the issue isn't actually sudo itself. It's actually the version of sudo within macOS. So it's basically a macOS issue. And when it comes to whatever issue was going on, there were issues whereby it sort of elevates root privileges to non-admin or local users. And that sort of seems like a serious issue because when it comes to OS, 
the root is basically the core and then you have all these other subsidiaries so that sort of seems to be like the issue that's here in this case and hopefully they can get it resolved soon now on the positive side though when it comes to some of the fixes that are here with this 11.2 the first one has to do with apple silicon m1 max whereby they were slow in response so a lot of people that were facing that issue are saying that that has been resolved and then also since you notice the release notes on release candidate number three they actually no longer mentioned the bluetooth issue which could sort of suggest that they've actually managed to nail it down in terms of the bad things when it comes to like some issues and bugs that are still here I will just highlight mainly the ones that I've been experiencing during my use of RC3 for the time that I've been using it. So the first issue that I've encountered has to do with Safari. So my Safari actually does not crash, but from time to time, this has happened, I think, once a day for the last two days, whereby Safari sort of loses like connectivity or sort of becomes slow. I do check my speed on the net using speedtest.net and it seems to work, but Safari sometimes is a bit slow when it comes to loading certain pages and even Apple's own website. I noticed that this has been something that I've experienced. And the other issue has to do with certain portions of the screen being blacked out. So I noticed this as I was doing some of my video edits. And the other issue has to do with iCloud Drive. So after disabling iCloud Backup for the desktop, because I don't want everything that I have on the desktop to go to my iCloud, I noticed that I started to have iCloud synchronization issues and iCloud tabs still has an issue to this time. Now, those sort of seems to be the main issues or bugs that I've experienced myself. And also if some users get to me, you know, proving that this is what's happening on a serious note, I'll be able to highlight it on my social media handles. Now let's sort of shift our attention to something positive, like the good parts of this operating system. For me, I have to highlight performance because performance has been always going up slightly since RC1. So I'll just highlight the Geekbench score numbers that I got on my previous updates. So on Geekbench 5, CPU scores for RC number three on single core, I had a score of 752. And then for multi core, I had a score of 3087. When it comes to RC number two for single core, I had a score of 749. And when it comes to multi core, I had a score of 3084. When it comes to RC1, single core, I had a score of 744. And for multi-core, I had a score of 2707. So you can see that since release candidate number one, it's been going up slightly. And that's a positive thing when it comes to performance. And also when it comes to GPU, it's actually the same. So on RC number three for GPU, I have a score of 17,829. And then for RC2, I have 17,706 and for RC1 I actually had a score of 14,815 so again when it comes to GPU this update 11.2 is sort of going up and up and that's a positive thing hopefully when the official version comes out you can also even take that bar higher let's talk about battery because battery is also on the rise with this Mac OS Pixel I've been experiencing a rise in the performance now if we go into the system preferences right here and then go to where it says battery right there I was actually on a zoom meeting call before this so let's close zoom and then if we go to where it says last 10 days you can sort of see actually if we go to the 24 hours last 24 hours you can see the battery drain during my zoom calls so I was on uh, zoom for from about nine to almost about 12 so that's quite some time and as you can see you can sort of see how my battery dropped right there and as you can see something that's reasonable it's not like a sharp drop or a v-shaped one and basically when i'm also on zoom i'm sort of doing other things i can be browsing pages on the side or some other sites and that's why you see the the usage is sort of more drastic than this other portion and then after this i was basically testing reading some uh, documents 
comments and then basically just browsing the internet so that's how it is for me so far here and then also if we go to this section where it says last 10 days you can see the energy usage and associated screen on time so for example if you look here around uh, Thursday you can see that I had about 10 hours of, sc of screen on time and I, that was using basically like 100% of charge and then on Friday you can see that I had about 5 hours 30 minutes and I basically used about 90% of charge. On Friday I was testing to see how this update can handle video playback so I was just streaming 4k resolution videos on YouTube just to see how good it handles that and as you can see five hours 30 minutes is not too bad that's almost like three or four movies which is good before I believe I was just getting like four hours max and my battery will just die but as you can see that's what's happening here and then as you can see here on Saturday I have about four hours and the energy usage is actually 50% as you can see here because well I've been doing a lot of zoom and a lot of uh, browsing at the same time so that's what's happening definitely there's no doubt that when it comes to performance it's you know slightly going up a bit by bit and also the same goes for battery performance i've been liking this and the developers are doing something right now when it comes to when we can sort of see this update should everything go well with this rc number three i'm sort of expecting something between next week tuesday and thursday that's sort of the window and if we don't get a final build well there should be some sort of an update i won't even go into what it could be but yeah look somewhere between tuesday and thursday next week or this week depending on how you set your calendar some people set sunday to be the first day of their week and some people set monday so yeah somewhere between tuesday and thursday that's about it for me if you like this video please leave a like and let me know how this update has been for you so far i have you updated are you waiting for the final release are you worried about some of the bugs that could potentially come within the update itself let me know in the comment section below and I will try to respond. And other than that, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Peace.